So Yannick Ngakwe has been traded to the Baltimore Ravens. I love this move. Uh, I like this move from both sides, but I love this move from Baltimore's perspective. Worth mentioning, uh, they've now gotten Yannick Ngakwe, Calais Campbell, and Marcus Peters with, without having to give up more than a third-round pick for either of them, which is just stupid. Uh, that's just in insane. Uh, they haven't had to give up a pick higher than a third-round pick. Um, he's a great player. He's in a position of need. Uh, so I love this move for, uh, I love this move for the Ravens. And on the flip side, it makes sense for Minnesota. You know, they traded for him thinking they were going to be a playoff contender. They might have been had Daniil Hunter been healthy, but clearly they're not a playoff contender at this point. They're not going to be a Super Bowl contender. So why not just trade a player who's going to be a free agent after the year, get some value back and just try to be better next year. It makes sense from both sides. But yeah, let's talk about uh, Baltimore and let's talk about uh, what this is going to add. Well, let's, let's talk about Ngakwe and how, what he's going to add to Baltimore. Uh, let's start off with this play. This is going to be a, a double team right here. So you have a tight end uh, who's going it, to, it's not a full double team. He's just chipping. So he's going to chip him. And then uh, 76th Brown is going to be able to get in position to block him. This makes sense. Like as you see, once this play starts, Brown now has plenty of time to get in position to block Ngakwe. And the reason why it's so important to do that against a guy like Ngakwe is that he's so good at the speed rush, which I'll get into a little bit more later on. Uh, so, you know, this by itself is already a good play from Ngakwe. He's taking up double teams. And while I like while I like Matt Judon a good amount, he isn't quite the guy who demands double teams. He's someone who you might do it here and there. But now, you know, you can have someone like uh, Ngakwe where you kind of have to chip a lot, which is going to free things up for Judon. So uh, that's going to make things a lot easier for both of them. Um, but anyways, what I like about this play, the reason why I showed this play isn't just that. It's because what I love about Ngakwe is he is someone who does not quit on plays. He is getting kind of beat right here. He kind of tried for a stab and grab move at the last second. Wasn't really able to get too much. It's not really his fault. It was a good chip at the line. Uh, but he sees that Russell Wilson is going to kind of run up in the pocket a little bit. And so because of this, Ngakwe, he is so aware. And so he's going to then get off the block to the inside and be able to get this sack. Uh, and he is, he's had a couple like that this season already. He is someone who he stays aware of what's going on. He knows where the quarterback is at all times and knows how to attack him, which is just such a valuable thing to have because uh, these plays do happen. Like this one's another example. He's going up one-on-one -on -one against a left tackle once again. Uh, and what's going to happen right at right when this uh, play starts, he's going to try to get to the outside, as you see. But Brown does a great job of, you notice how he gets his right arm on Ngakwe's, uh, you know, sort of left side of his shoulder pad area. It's just a good block. Uh, so, you know, well done by him. So now Ngakwe, he, he needs to figure something else out. And honestly, I think a lot of guys in this moment, they kind of just give up. They just sort of try to stay where they're at to make sure they don't give up containment. And, you know, if Russell Wilson tries to run in their area, then they try to get off the block. Uh, not Ngakwe. He's going to keep fighting. There is the good arm placement right there. So what he's going to do instead is try for a pull club now, which is a perfect situation, perfect thing to do in this situation where he would, what he would do is he would get his right arm, sort of grab uh, Brown's left side of his body, and he's going to pull with that. And then he's going to push with his left arm to kind of try to twist him and try to get by that way. And watch how well it works. He's able to grab on and just twist, get to the inside, and then he's able to create some pressure for Wilson, who still makes the throw because he's Russell Wilson. But it's still a good play, a good example of showing what he can do. I have to be honest, I think Ngakwe is actually having his best season right now. I think that he, he he's more explosive than I remember him being. Like on this one, uh, it's going to be a running play. He has a one-on-one -on -one matchup against a left tackle, so... Uh, you know, this isn't, these aren't typically the plays you show, but what I like about this play is going to be his footwork. What's going to happen is that 70 is going to kind of run out to block Ngakwe, but what Ngakwe is going to do is watch how he's going to sort of fake as though he's going to the outside, but then he's just going to cut right back in and he gets completely by, by him and is able to make a quick tackle on Derrick Henry, which that's not easy to do. So really just a tremendous play by Ngakwe and he can make those kind of highlight real level plays and again he's more explosive now than I think ever he's always been quick but he now has the footwork that I haven't really I feel like he's I feel like this year I've seen an even better uh footwork from him 
than I have in previous years. And yeah, you gotta talk about the speed too. I mean, like like this one's a great example. Uh, he's going up one on one against a left tackle, and it's worth mentioning that. For this offensive line, really, if I'm Tannehill, I think that I probably bring a tight end in or bring someone else in to block. He has a halfback in, but you know, there's extra. Pr- there could be extra pressure up the middle, so the line doesn't really know what's going on. He's going up one on one against the left tackle, but the left tackle doesn't know that, you know, right now because it could be multiple people coming from that side. So because of that, he's a little bit slow in getting to the outside. And if you look at Ngakwe, I mean, he's just ready to win this matchup already. He notices that, you know, he has some room to the outside. The tackle's going to try to put his left arm out and try to catch on to Ngakwe that way. So what Ngakwe is going to do is simply just grab his own left arm and basically just slam it down so that way he can then run through and try to get to Tannehill. That's what he's going to try and do. That's what he's going to succeed at doing. He's able to get by the tackle, and he knocks the ball out of Ryan Tannehill's hands. Uh, Just a great play. And that's the nice thing about having a guy who's good at a speed rush is it does lead to forced fumbles. This one's another example where you see that there are multiple Vikings on the line once again. This is Anthony Costanzo, who's a great player in his own right. Uh, But what's going to happen is that since there are multiple players who are in his area, you know, there's a linebacker who could also be blitzing. He's going to just be a little bit slow in picking up Ngakwe. It takes him just a little split second after the ball is snapped to pick up Ngakwe. Maybe he even had a different snap count, uh, so that could have been a problem. I don't know. Uh, but that little split second is going to be too much. Watch how Ngakwe blows right by him and gets right to Rivers for another uh, strip sack fumble. This one, again, recovered by the offense. But, you know, that's what he's capable of doing. He's an incredible player. And what I love about this trade even more than the player uh, and the value, I mean, third round pick for a player this good, that's great value. Uh, Because he is a Pro Bowl level player. He's a consistent 10 sack guy. He's easily going to get 10 sacks this year. Uh, But more than that, what I like about it is that it's the position of need for Baltimore. They really needed an edge rusher. That's kind of the one thing that's really like the one sort of area in their roster that was shaky. And this is a complete football team. It really is. This is a great defense now, and it already was a great defense. And this is a, obviously, you know, the offense last year was historically good. While it hasn't been quite as good this year offensively, I think a lot of that is just they're not really running the ball with Lamar Jackson the way they did. I think it's intentional. They don't want to get him hurt. I think they're okay, okay with not having as good of an offense in the regular season. They want to keep him healthy and also sort of get some more reps through the throwing game in case they need it in the play. Playoffs. Uh, so I love this Baltimore team. Uh, I mean, they're right there. They're still a legit Super Bowl contender. They really are. Uh, and this is a huge move uh, that could be the final piece of the puzzle. We'll have to wait and see. What do you guys think of this move? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>